Hi, I think we'll start uh, with today's discussion. Uh, before that, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to whosoever has joined us today. Welcome back to the sessions. And I hope you get to understand about the cities of culture for which we were talking about in the last session uh, in much more depth. Um, as promised, we will be discussing each and every commitment that kind of comprises of uh, the whole project and um, in, in a particular order in which they have to be taken. Uh, for today's discussion, we'll be taking up uh, commitment one, which deals with cultural rights and responsibilities and um, the kind of emphasize on their importance and, uh, you know, and makes us understand our responsibility and our, and our role as active citizens and how can we do, how can we participate in a more culturally rich uh, city life, so to say. So um, before moving forward, um, I will, I think a lot of people are still joining in. So is it okay if I, like if we wait for five, five more minutes, because uh, I see a pe people coming in. So yeah, let's wait for two, three more minutes and then I'll probably start and share the screen. Thank you. Okay, all right, uh, coming back to our discussion. Um, as said, uh, we'll be talking about the role of cultural rights in, uh, if we talk about the project as such, the project that we are talking about in Tax Cities for Culture. Hello, hi. <laughs> uh, what is the role of rights in pursuing this particular project and how can rights be a part of the whole system or the whole commitments that have been devised to, in order to you know, achieve this project. So um, I'll quickly share my screen and we'll have a little bit of discussion about the importance of cultural rights, which no one really discusses about. And you know um, that's something that is very, you know, as citizens, we are anyway not aware of uh, in general, we are not really aware of our rights as citizens. And given the fact uh, that uh, culture is something very inherent to us, cultural rights is out of the you know out of the scene, out of the picture altogether. So uh, we'll do that, followed by a discussion with Ms. Akriti, Akriti Bhatnagar, who took up the project in the city of Bhopal, and how she was able to understand and analyze. Uh, the current context of cultural rights in the city and what all things or what all methods have been devised by the city administration in the current context or how can they probably be taken up uh, if we have to talk about cultural rights, so to say. So I'll share my screen. Okay. Coming on to the basic most thing is that uh, culture, culture or heritage, so to say, is something that, of course, is inherent to us. It's something that we have created of, for ourselves, by ourselves, and for, you know, uh, in general, the people who are a part of it. So we can rightly say, uh, in, it can be rightly put as culture is something created. It's of the people, it's for the people, and it's, of course, by the people. Uh, Interestingly, cultural rights, they form the six fundamental rights. They form the 
form an integral part of the six fundamental rights in India. And Article 29 and 30 kind of elaborates in detail about it. Uh, if we talk about the direct relationship between culture and rights, we unfortunately don't see a direct linkage happening. Uh, there can be a lot many, you know, a lot many uh, nuances where we can uh, see the connection can be done, but it doesn't happen. And uh, even with respect to the rights that are currently given to us as citizens, for example, we have NHRC in place, the National Human Rights Commission. Uh, it does have a special dedicated section to it, but uh, unfortunately, there is nothing specific uh, related to cultural rights when it comes to that. Uh, apart from that, Article 27 of UNESCO uh, elaborates on human rights and emphasizes on the importance of culture as the basic and utmost, you know, the basic most uh, right when it comes to human rights. Uh, even in the current context, when we have understood the importance and vitality of culture as the prime most uh, thing when it comes to development, uh, there's not much, you know, not of unawareness and insensitivity regarding that. Uh, in I am pretty sure even the lot here, all of us, we are totally unaware about, about our rights in general. Cultural rights is a different thing altogether. So yeah, we are not uh, unaware. Uh, we are totally unaware about it. Then there are a lot many heritage laws that could have been in place, but they are not. There is a lot of work that is still being done in the sector. So yeah, that ways. Then a uh, lot of guidelines on rights, responsibilities, and freedoms are still to be developed. And exercising them is again an altogether different thing. So there's a lot of uh, there, there's no development as such in that sector, and people are still working towards it. So yeah, uh, that's what uh, I had to say about the current context of it and what all things are there in place and um, with respect to the Indian in you know in the Indian um, context as well as in the international context. Uh, the six fundamental rights that we were probably talking about were right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, because a lot of, a lot, many of us will not be, might not be aware about it. So I just thought we'll probably share. Then the fifth one forms the cultural and educational, educational rights that we talk about. Again, we see a lot of clubbing happening with respect to culture and education. So again, and also it is very uh, it's very, it's an interesting mix because you see culture and education being put together at the same pedestal. It kind of emphasizes uh, at the importance of culture being a part of the education system where we start educating our, you know, our children or our peers at a very small, at a very uh, small level, at a very you know, nascent stages of our livelihoods, of our lives. Uh, culture is something, of course, since it's intrinsic, it should even be much more developed at that stage itself. So yeah, it, it's um, it's an interesting thing to understand and study, of course. Then again, uh, the right to constitutional remedies that forms the sixth uh, fundamental right. Uh, talking about the NHRC, again, uh, you can probably see one of the sections, which uh, section that is speci specially dedicated for the whole thing. It doesn't really talk about cultural rights um, you know, in detail. So a lot has to be done. Uh, a lot, many states might have a specialized cell or might have a specialized uh, department working towards attainment of cultural rights in some way or the other. Again, it's very passive. It's, it's not you know, right there out in front and uh, yeah, so you, since you belong to different chapters and different states and different cities, uh, you might have to, you know, look into what your city or city administration or uh, whatever bodies or whatever agencies are there, what, how are they trying to do it, if at all they are doing anything about it. So that, this is the UNESCO declaration that we were discussing about. Uh, it's spec specified in the Article 5th. Uh, of the two, 2001 UNESCO Declaration of, on Culture, which says and which emphasizes on the fact that accessing and enjoying culture is an important part of being a citizen. Uh, city, you know, if we talk about a city, city is something that is created for citizens and by citizens of it. And culture, 
so to say is uh, resultant of such of such interaction between the citizens which makes it very essential uh, you know to the core existence of a city and uh, in order to be properly be a part of a city to be able to enjoy it enjoy it even you know to to its utmost level it's very important that culture is made a part of it and uh, again it states on the rights of a citizen to be able to participate in identification interpretation and development of cultural heritage as well as design and implementation of safeguarding policies and programs which work towards it uh i can probably put up an example of uh, in the indian context it's a very simple basic example that uh, you know um, i came across um the smart cities mission that we probably talk about and we see happening all around us in lots of cities in india there are lot many different techniques uh that you know uh, were applied to get it implemented um i know an active um case of dehradun at times you know all these decisions all these uh, strategies or all these decisions are made in a box and people the agencies don't really go out and talk to the general lot talk to the citizens of the city about it in case of dehradun i found it really interesting i'm sure there might be other cities also uh, where they would have done that but i know of dehradun where they developed a since it's a smart city thing so they developed all these apps and everything and for dehradun they developed uh, you know an inbuilt feature in the app where the uh, citizens could participate they would poll you know if some um, in, you know some kind of intervention has to be made with respect to city uh, they would put that out on that app and the citizens would poll so accordingly uh, a lot many things can be done in the you know on the same grounds where citizens there is this prop you know a peculiar problem of how do we involve people and uh, if uh, at all it happens it happens in terms of um, a particular representative of um, of citizens so uh, it can get very much biased at times and it can not really represent people so to say so this since we are you know we are in this technological uh, phase where everything is surrounded we are, we are surrounded by technology and every day, each day you know day by day we are becoming very tech savvy why not use such methods and in in that way a lot can be considered and uh, people can have truly have some say in the decisions that are being made with respect to the city so yeah similarly uh, things can be done with respect to culture and other activities that happen in the city or that can be probably done uh coming on to the commitment that this program specifically focuses on uh, and what uclg has uh, devised they kind of came out with 10 action points which somehow cater if we were to you know follow these 10 action points they somehow in some direction cater to uh, cater to the assessment and analyzation of cultural rights of citizens of that specific city and understand the gap if at all things are happening good enough and uh, are they happening to the utmost extent that it is desired or if not what all things can be done you know with respect to increasing uh, that activity so it clearly specifies that how rights of uh, all individuals to freedom of speech access to heritage values and identities and uh participation in cultural life is very necessary uh it kind of guarantees the ability to everyone to identify with one or several cultural com- communities for example you might belong to a particular uh, community so to say particular background but on an individual level it kind of provides you with this impeccable chance of you know interaction and um, getting to know about other culture and maybe uh identify yourself with the values the uh, you know the kind of things other people or other cultures have to offer so if at all we are aware about the culture that surrounds us um cultural rights so to say it's of course they'll be unbiased uh they'll be very plural 
interns and uh, not really specifically catering to single um, culture's identity. And uh, it will help develop a very unified, uh, what do I say, a very unified approach to a city, and which will make all these things, all these, you know, development policies coming into place much more feasible, much more easier, and much more applicable. So yeah, uh, coming on to the 10 action points, which um, UCLG talks about is, uh, to begin with, ensuring that the local and cultural heritage policies are based on cultural rights, and they kind of encourage citizens to participate in the culture of the city in however, whichever way possible, and to take responsibilities, you know, if they are coming up as simple as coming up with some sort of uh, you know, cultural fest happening. Are they including citizens in it in some way or the other? It might be, you know, showcasing their uh, uh, showcasing their handicrafts in some way or the other, or in giving some incentives for people, uh, you know, to people to begin with, so that they come forward and you know be a part of uh, that process. Uh, are there any sort of guidelines on cultural and heritage rights, responsibilities, and freedom uh, with respect to that city? Are there any measures which encourage citizen participation, participation as individuals or societies? or representatives in prioritization, decision-making, and evaluation of cult cultural policies. Very ironic. Uh, we don't, you know, to begin with, we have not many cultural policies in place. Uh, but again, if there are, are any, or if uh, some of them are being devised, is there any participation of people uh, with respect to any representative also? Is there any participation or is there any uh, recognition or uh, representation for that matter. Um, there should be at least minimum standards to ensure basic cultural rights for citizens in terms of libraries and museums. Uh, very common example of libraries and museums and all these cultural places, which uh, sort of are a hub for the whole thing. And they provide you with that platform to interact for, you know, for interaction, for exchange and for representation. Uh, do they have ample uh, establishments, ample number of such establishments? Are there any? And if so, uh, are they um, guided by any set of law or any set of, you know, something that kind of guides the whole thing? Also, uh, they talk about the analysis of problem areas. And if they are not, there'll be lots of, of course, there'll be lots of problems to it. There'll be lots of obstacles that might have led to, you know, to this shunning of the whole thing. So what are those probable uh, things? At times, the departments, you know, uh, since Department of Culture, you know, it's uh, present everywhere in each state. Directorate is there and then Department of Culture is there. So their whole sole purpose of existence is to uh, create that culture and, you know, create that whole system. And there might be a lot many surveys that they might be doing and uh, they might be looking into it, but there might be some sort of a lack in action, you know, uh, with respect to that uh, problem area. So what are these, are they, are the other departments doing anything about it at all? And if are, they are trying to, then what are the obstacles that are, you know, probably holding them back? Then again, uh, talking about policies and programs, which kind of uh, aim at cit citizens' involvement and uh, in the creation of culture and the practices that are there. Uh, mm, for example, uh, it's not really direct direct linking, but for example, a lot of um, you know people from rural areas probably would have still um, uh, still have some things intact or some traditional knowledge system intact with them, and there might be certain practices. Uh, they might be doing, which are representative, representative of their culture. So are there any policies uh, with respect to tribal people also? There are not many policies which have been done for them, right? In order for them to be able to uh, propagate their um, knowledge more and propagate their craft more or whatever form of culture they are still carrying out with whatever possible resources. So there are a lot many policies created. This is an example that I'm giving uh, with respect to that. And are there any such policies 
similar on similar grounds or maybe on sim- in similar ways for other categories so yeah that uh, one needs to check with respect to their city then formulation of cultural policies which pay special attention to the most vulnerable groups and individuals of course there are lot many cultures that are on the verge of extinction and uh, people you know people there's there's this um what do i say this lot of homogenization for that matter happening and people are li- leaving this you know a lot of foreign uh influence a lot of foreign influence in terms of uh, not really foreign foreign or the western ideas or the european ideas but yeah west uh, foreign as in they're going out they're moving out because lot many they are facing a lot of problems with respect to resources and they're moving out because they are finding better job opportunities or uh, uh, better standards of living so if we again take up the example of uh, the tribal communities a lot many tribals in lot many states so uh, is government kind of providing any sort of facilitation with respect to that so that that they continue living and that of course again with respect to choices it's a it's a personal choice a lot many might want to move out but with respect to people who still choose to stay back and want to stay back are there any such provisions provided by government so that then <coughs> creating opportunities to encourage participation of women in cultural life and eliminating gender discrimination why women uh, it's not just women uh, to all parts of the society and you know eliminating all sort of gender discrimination or caste uh, discrimination are there any policies in place for that you know uh, so that they have equal opportunities all sorts of all strata of society be it younger person or be it be it an elderly person are they able to enjoy it freely uh, is there any provision of linking cultural responsibilities with civil society organization working in human rights are there any human rights departments you know uh, nhrc hrc has uh, localized state level uh, departments that work uh, in that particular realm so they at the state level are do they recognize any such cultural rights for that matter and if they do have they assigned it to a particular have they created something out of it any society that they might have created or any specific specific people that are probably working on it and if they are then how are they doing it again uh if they have created something what are the things that they are probably trying to achieve the whole thing so these are the basic 10 points that uh, ucl uclg has devised and uh, which lets us understand the rights of citizens uh, the cultural rights and uh, you might have to understand these 10 points and see how your city is performing with respect to these and uh, probably do an assessment based on that i think we discussed about the radar uh, radar diagram circular radar where we had to plot right we have to we had to mark against each and every action point it will help you know it will have have some sort of a weightage and once we are done doing that we'll see how we as a city are performing with respect uh, to the other cities um, on the global platform and what all things can be done in order to achieve or enhance our rights and responsibilities as uh part of the city that we are living in uh so that was what uh uclg in general talks about that is what cultural rights are to begin with and uh, i am pretty sure uh, a lot of us might not be oriented about cultural rights specifically so it's a good start and i will again request you all to probably look into your city's cultural rights uh you know uh, talking about this particular program is a different thing but since we all are somehow interested in uh, culture and heritage and we all want to be a part of it it's very much important for us to make that a part of our lives and understand our rights and responsibilities as citizens and see what all what all things are offered right now so yeah that was it uh, from my side uh, we have akriti uh she is again a conservation architect a cultural heritage professional and uh, 
since say, Bhopal was the pilot city of it, the whole program, uh, we kind of worked together and we understood what all are the probabilities with respect to that city. She'll be shedding light on um, what all things are there in place with respect to that city and what all gaps she could understand and find. So yeah, Aditi, hi, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Uh, Sukriti, would it be possible for you to actually share the screen uh, from the radar report cultural rights part? I'm facing some uh, problem with my laptop. So, okay, just a yeah. second. I'll have to check because um, it might not be available in this system. So yeah, just give me two minutes. Yeah. Akriti, does this work? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. You want me to zoom in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. So, hi, uh, everyone. Um, myself, Akriti, and uh, I was working with IHA uh, and Bhopal chapter. So, we started working on this, uh, this particular culture, 21 cities for culture, and Bhopal was our pilot city. So basically, the first thing that we tried to understand was uh, trying to understand the existing framework for Culture 21 and trying to relate it with the context of Indian cities. Uh, because it's a broader framework and uh, it is more or less uh, the guidelines which we are supposed to follow worldwide, uh, be it any city that we are taking from any country. So the most important and the foremost thing was to understand each and every action point within each and every commitment. So to understand that, what we did was, uh, first of all, try to uh, subdivide each and every action point into certain uh, sub-action points, uh, which helped us in data collection. So, so I think I'll be starting with, you know, with all the action points for this particular commitment. So the first one, uh, Sukriti, can you just zoom into the uh, particular action point, first action point? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the first one was to um, ensuring the local cultural and heritage policies are based on cultural rights and encourage citizens to participate and take responsibilities. So in this, the first thing was to understand what exactly are cultural rights or what is the cultural right uh, that we are supposed to actually look into uh, while talking about a particular city. So the first thing that we tried to collect was uh, from the culture department of uh, MP, uh, because it's uh, the headquarters and or I can say the main building or the main department is functioning in Bhopal. So we had access to the um, to the main city uh, to the main department, and uh, we tried it, we tried to collect the um, annual calendars, uh, the annual report uh, of culture department to see and understand what exactly are they doing uh, to understand the cultural rights or per se cultural policy. So what we found was that uh, there's nothing in the name of cultural policy per se. So what we found were some five or six uh, pointers that we have uh, we have included in the reference points that you can see below. And uh, so they mention certain activities, they mention certain uh, agendas that are supposed to be included when you're talking about uh, culture or we can talk about cultural activities for the city, but nothing more that is uh, that is there as a holistic framework under which we can actually talk about uh, the cultural practices of the city. So the culture department has a list of five points which are mentioned in cultural policy. Um, they call the, it's actually titled as cultural policy. Um, 
these five points which are written behind the um which is which actually becomes the uh, component of the back cover of the annual report document uh, it was pretty much ironical but uh, that is all that we have in the name of cultural policy uh, for uh, for bhopal and uh, for for mp i think and uh, then there are certain activities that they have mentioned that are supposed to be taken care of um, how much they are being taken care of or not is again a question and we have been asking that question from quite a long time ki what all uh, what all these points that are mentioned as a part of uh, activities of culture department are actually taken into consideration so then secondly uh, the second action point uh, can you come to the second action point yeah so development of a guideline on cultural and heritage rights responsibilities and freedoms now this one uh, is a tricky one because first of all and the foremost thing to understand is that in the in the framework of uh, um the national framework what is the understanding of cultural rights or have we actually included uh, culture or heritage rights specifically uh, as one of the fundamental rights so what we found out was that uh, there is nothing that you can see which is being practiced at the city or state level it's an it's a broader or kind of an overall framework that addresses these cultural rights and uh, uh there is no specifically right to culture but there is a right to education and culture um which is um, which is uh, one of the articles and uh, you can see it in the reference points that article 29 in the constitution of india uh, that mentions this which is about the uh, protection of interest of the minorities so again um, this is something which is um, addressing or referring to the one second yeah this is addressing or referring to the uh, cultural rights or uh, uh, or the cultural practices for minorities but not specifically to the wider section of the society um secondly again as as i mentioned earlier also that right to culture and education becomes one of the fundamental rights where uh, culture is uh, with respect to the educational institutions again it is being addressed in the constitution of india so So for example what we see um, there are certain uh, educational institutions where or of which are being run by the minorities or uh, so and uh, there you can see for example uh, i would say mother size one of the institutions educational institution where you can see that uh, um, culture and education becomes they actually coexist in a way so that is one of the points then again uh, article 29 uh, article 49 in the constitution of india um, which is part of directive principles of state policy that mentions about protection of monuments and places and objects of uh, national importance so again uh, this is one of the points that was uh, analyzed in this slide and uh, it it forms a part of the again the national framework nothing uh, which was being uh, done or nothing which was which you can see at a state level being uh, initiated upon then you see uh, uh, then action point number 3 adopt measures to encourage citizen participation as individual society groups or as representatives in prioritization decision making and evaluation of cultural policies so we couldn't address this action point uh, because uh, in the light that there is no specific cultural policy for the city or for the state uh, so until unless we have a cultural policy we cannot ensure or we cannot encourage that there is citizen participation in actually um decision making process or in in the process of prioritization of any of the points of the cultural policy so until unless we have a cultural policy we uh, we cannot uh, comment upon this certain action point but yeah we again suggested that this could be one of the points that could be taken or we can adhere to certain practice uh in the in case when we have when we actually have a cultural policy in place now the fourth point is a very interesting one and uh, uh there are uh, i mean there are hidden certain nuances to uh, this particular action point where they say that uh, confirming minimum standards to ensure basic cultural rights for the citizens libraries and museums 
now this is a point uh, which i found to be addressing two uh, primary issues one is that is culture actually accessible to all so when you talk about libraries or museum you have books in libraries you have a certain uh, artifacts or objects of cultural interest which are being displayed in the museum and they are there in the city uh, every city has certain libraries and museums so first and foremost thing is that do we actually have enough libraries because libraries obviously contain a very huge knowledge resource of books and anybody uh, who wants to know or who wants to understand um, the cultural context of the city i think books are the best medium or uh, museums are the best medium to actually interpret the culture of any place so we tried and analyzed this thing that how many libraries are there in the city how many museums are there in the city uh, what exactly are these what exactly um, is the count of books in the, in all these libraries what are the standards uh, which are there in place uh, which talk about that for a certain population these many libraries should be there and uh, how many museums are there in the city so i think in uh, in the reference points you'll see that uh, from uh, the annual report of bhopal municipal corporation we found that uh, there are um, 70 reading rooms in the city And then uh, can you come to the next page sukriti then in the next page you can see that uh, there are almost uh, there is a standard of bhumi vikas niyam which says that uh, there should be approximately around uh, one community hall and library for the population of 15000 and uh, there are uh, we could list out nine libraries in the city uh, being run by different uh, um, organizations um, so few of them are public libraries few of them are uh, libraries which are a part of certain institution and uh, we try to collect and find information about the number of books uh in these libraries uh, how many are the uh, members of this library which one are the open libraries which one are the libraries which are uh, for particular members so these were the certain points we tried to find out and we could actually uh, we we have actually given i think 10 marks for this particular action one because we found that uh, based on the population of the city the number of libraries and number of museums are enough now the point of question is that are these museums or are these libraries accessible to the people of the city now with accessibility i do not mean that uh, um accessibility in terms of physical accessibility or mobility uh, accessible accessibility with with ex- accessibility i mean that uh, how many people are actually aware about it or how many people actually want to use this so when you talk about uh, be making culture accessible to the people we actually have to understand that are we really Uh, bringing a lot of people or are we actually making people aware about these things aware about these museums are we taking steps or are we taking initiatives that maximum people are actually engaged or maximum people are actually using these kind of uh, existing knowledge resources that um, a city has to offer so these are public places only but uh, again the point is that where they are located in the city um, is there any um, minimum fee to enter these places or uh, are they open or are they membership based so these are the certain points where we talk about the minimum conforming standards uh, for cultural rights then action point number 5 analysis of problem areas and obstacles to citizens access and participation in cultural life so this is in correlation with the previous um, previous action point only so certainly um, you see a lot of cultural activities in the city um, bhopal is a very vibrant city very culturally very vibrant city and uh, there are uh, a lot of public places uh, there are a lot of lot of spaces in the city places in the city where you see these uh, cultural activities being carried out and um, certain cultural activities by certain groups um, for example you see that uh, Uh, i have given in this the example of uh, all the major i think there's this bhcl example i cannot see it yeah so the cultural spaces in the cities are largely sorry so pretty have to scroll it up a bit are largely created by the municipal bodies or departments 
and you see uh, these cultural spaces being used very nicely by the people uh, so for example if you have dashera or you have uh, this uh, uh, processions for durga puja or this uh, ganesh utsav so you see uh, there are a lot of uh, water bodies in the city and all these places are actually uh, for that uh, what is the word for it bahate uh, hain jab these murtis so visarjan so for these visarjan activities all these processions are carried out in the city and uh, they ensure that uh, it is done in a very sustainable manner all the places are properly uh, properly guarded by the police and uh, a lot of care is being taken and it's it's at the uh, it's it's a government initiative so this is one of the points that tells us that though there is a cultural um, activity uh there's a cultural activity in the city and it's not something which is uh, only people's initiative there's the entire support of the government of the entire police force and it's in place and people can actually easily uh, without any sort of nuisance being created around people can actually practice their uh, cultural practices in a very uh, peaceful manner so secondly a very important point uh, is that uh, you have uh, gazetted holidays on all these uh, days so that is one of the points that actually tells us that uh, there is a, there is full recognition of these cultural practices by the government and is, it is something which is a very generalized thing for all the cities of india uh, be it any place you have uh, these uh, gazetted holidays you have these uh, uh, initiatives being taken for example if you talk about kumbh mela or if you talk about any major festival which is being taken uh, which is being held in any city so um, entire support of government uh, you can find in these practices then um, next action point yeah these are some of the media clippings that we were yeah this is also one of the parallel activities that we were doing uh, while we were collecting data from all the government departments we were actually um, on daily basis on daily basis we were uh, taking uh, clippings from the um, from the dailies daily newspapers uh, about uh, any cultural activity that was being uh, that was being held in the city so the next point is introduction and formulation of policies and programs which aim at citizens broader and more active involvement in cultural creation and its practices more or less uh, it, it is in line with the previous action point so again uh, as we have mentioned over here also that there is no written cultural policy document but the citizens do celebrate various festivals which much, with the much enthusiasm and uh, this is possible because in local authorities provide support which is essential for such events involving participation of thousands of persons you have a lot of open parks in, uh, in the new colonies which are developed uh, by bhopal development authority or housing board and uh, or private developers and these are the major open spaces or uh, the community open spaces where you can see um, people practicing or people uh, taking initiative or people being becoming part of these cultural events uh, there is a list that has been attached at the end of this report we can actually look into it later so again the same thing in the indian context we do not see uh, in a lot of cities i don't think in any of the cities in india there is actually a cultural policy that is dictating it but for some reason you can see people being actually actively involved in these uh, activities and uh, government giving full support to these uh, activities so this may not be mentioned in the scheme but the long history of such events has almost become like a rite and these events are marked in the calendar of the city or a police station where the administration makes all the arrangements now these are few of the activities and initiatives that we actually took from the culture department report uh, so there are these annual reports that are being published by the culture department every year uh, we went through the annual reports of uh, four to five consecutive years and from those uh, reports and annual culture calendars also we found that there are a list of activities uh, for various kind of cultural practices so you can see training programs for kathak sitar for citizens and um, i mean i was really surprised to see this but there are all these events at the beginning of any year any financial year you can say 
uh, at the beginning of that a cultural calendar is being formed and all these activities are actually mentioned into it and it is being taken care by the directorate of culture which is a sub body under culture department so directorate of culture has a lot of uh, various uh, um, you can say uh, institutions that are working in collaboration and uh, various activities are being conducted or various activities are being um organized or held in all these uh, simultaneous places so bharat bhavan is one of them then you have tribal museum is one of them then ravindra bhavan is one of them so all these cultural places are actually uh, what all events are to be conducted in all these places are being taken care of right in the beginning of any financial year so workshops on paintings bal natya drupad form of singing art painting rangoli making writing all these workshops are conducted competitions are organized exhibitions at uh, a very frequent basis you can see exhibitions being held then uh, culture honor and awards now these are given every year and uh, they are given in the amount i mean some um, cash amount is given um, and the it's not uh, specific to one form of art or uh, various cultural um, you can say beat art beat singing beat dancing in all these uh, spheres of uh, cultural activities you can see these awards or these uh, honors being given to specific people who have excelled um, in that particular art form and uh, they are being given on yearly basis then uh, these are few of the clippings of uh, media clippings you can say from um, from dainik bhaskar which is one of the most famous dailies of uh, mp and uh, you can see uh workshops you can see children being involved in the workshop and let's come to the next page can you scroll down to the yeah so the next action point is uh, action point number 7 yeah so formulation of cultural policies which pay special attention to the most vulnerable groups and individuals while allowing all people to have access to and transmit their own cultural expression on uh, this becomes a very important point action point within uh, this commitment because uh, generally uh, it's these vulnerable groups that have to be actually taken care of because they uh, there are a lot of vulnerable groups in every uh, cultural region and uh, Uh, are i mean are they allowed to practice or their uh, traditions or their uh, art forms or their festivals easily or not so first thing was identifying uh, certain departments which actually are formed to, uh, to which are actually addressing these particular vulnerable groups so first thing was to identify these departments few of them were adivasi lok kala parishad uh, bharat bhavan tribal welfare department social justice department women and child welfare department uh, there are more but these are few of the ones which are uh, primarily uh, responsible or uh, actually taking care of the vulnerable groups of uh, for mp we can say in this context so since it is a part of the regular mandate of these agencies it's not necessary that this be specifically written the programs organized are also a very diverse type there are the dramas dance events that have performances by the specially able children and uh, specific uh, for example you can see that uh, tribal painters goan painters are actually promoted and uh, in in bhopal there are all the public walls you can see which are around the roads or around any bridges or all these places you can see uh, gond artists actually making uh, gond art is very famous in mp as i don't know most of you would be knowing so it is a very popular art form and uh, it is actually given a proper stage in the public domain and uh, this actually gives a lot of encouragement to people to new artists and uh, they are also now joining in in these initiatives so these are basically government initiatives only and again as i have said earlier also it is not written anywhere these are um, you know separate separate uh, in in different uh, different departments or different agencies taking up these practices or taking up these initiatives and you can see it being practiced in the city so 
in the same light i say that we really need a you know we really need a certain document that can actually um become a bigger become an umbrella kind of a document addressing all these uh, practices so that if there is any sort of change in the political regime uh, these are not lost with any certain particular bias or particular interest interest uh, something is being promoted or something is being forgotten that should not happen and there should be more of promotion only of these uh, activities or cultural events and uh, we we should try to include as much as we can in the uh, in the public uh, you know in the public day to day life then the eighth point is creating opportunities to encourage participation of women in cultural life and eliminating gender discrimination i would say a very important point and uh, so what we found out was uh, from for this particular action point that uh, from the kind of cultural activities that we could collect the information about the cultural activities of the city from the annual reports or uh, calendars culture calendars um, we tried to segregate all the cultural activities that are specifically targeting women and uh, could be any kind of cultural activity could be dance could be uh, painting could be promotion of female filmmakers um, so what all are the various activities that have been conducted for women by by women um in the consecutive 4 to 5 years span of uh, of cultural events that we actually took into consideration for uh, the cultural activities of the city so for example you can see that um, mushaira shayarat uh, it is a form of uh, it is it is a form of um, you can say shayari uh, which is being which is being done by the women and uh, There yeah, was a picture a of it. Of it. I mean, for some reason, I cannot. Yeah, there's a picture of it. Of it. I don't know where. It is. It is there. I think in the first page. 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 Just a second. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is a very interesting picture for Mushaira Shayarat. Oh, it's not here. Where did I see it? Um, it is some. It, it is. It was there. there. I think uh, it went into some. Maybe some place else. But okay, it, now it, I remember. yeah it is uh, it is with commitment number 6 because that is also talking about uh, okay yes yeah that was the equality and social about, inclusion yeah. yeah yeah maybe there yeah equality social inclusion so there uh, <laughs> because again as i said that these commitments have a lot of overlaps and uh, so in here also we are talking about now this is this becomes one of the action points for cultural rights but that entire commitment talks about these all these uh, um all these uh, aspects in detail so definitely when we'll be talking about that commitment uh, i can refer back to this particular action point then uh, linking cultural responsibility with civil society organization working in human rights um definitely uh, there are there are no uh, specific uh, civil society organizations that are working for cultural rights but again we try to um, there is obviously uh, all these cities they have uh, Mm, human rights commission or human rights uh, civil society organizations that are working in human rights so um currently we could not find can you scroll a bit uh, thoda sa upar so civil society no no sorry i mean i cannot see action point number 9 the text for action point number 9 is it there so there are almost 64 ngos that we could find that are working for uh, human rights and uh, one second so these 64 ngos that are working for human rights uh, they do not talk about cultural rights directly but again um, this is one of the recommendations that we can see or we can address it in future that uh, first of all making them aware about cultural rights and including them including cultural rights as an integral part of human right now that is one of the most important things that we need to address and right now it's not there that's why i think we have given the score of 3 to this particular action point because as of now we cannot see uh, cultural rights uh, being uh, taken care of in uh, uh, you know uh, being taken care of a very uh, as a unique identity uh, in separation so human rights are definitely definitely there in uh, 
I mean, human rights are there uh, being practiced by people or there are organizations taking care of human rights, but we need to actually integrate human rights with cultural rights in some way or the other. And I think the last action point, can we come to the last action point? Can you, can you scroll a bit, Supriti? Is it okay? No, I cannot see the last action point. This is the 10th one, no? Introducing policies and programs. I, no, I cannot it? see it, so. Yeah, just a second. Now? I cannot see the 10th action point. I don't know, the, I think the screen is stuck. It might be because of the internet, I guess. Okay. Could be. Um, so I did actually. From here only. Just a second. Yeah, yeah. Introducing policies and programs to increase the number of active members of civil society organizations um, dedicated to culture. So again, the state has provided. It just went down. There's some lag actually <laughs> with the screen that is well. Yeah, the state has provided a framework of institution. Yeah, yeah. So the state has provided a framework of institution under the register of uh, registrar of firms and societies to register any NGO approaching them for registration. And uh, there are many NGOs registered with the registrar which address various issues related to culture in Bhopal district. Some of them are listed below. So uh, not very directly, but indirectly you can say that uh, uh, with the presence of uh, certain civil society organizations that are being uh, uh, that are actually uh, involved in human rights, uh, we can uh, introduce uh, these uh, practices or these uh, this policy framework or cultural rights into their existing uh, existing framework. So with this, I think uh, there all these ten action points have been covered, and uh, our analysis from this entire. Uh, 10 action points and this entire commitment was that uh, cultural rights uh, ensure that every citizen has a right to practice their cultural activities and uh, for Bhopal it's a multicultural society uh, so it is seen that different communities have uh, have you marked their own spaces uh, have marked their own spaces and uh, these are seen not only in their day-to-day -day interactions and habitations, but their festivals also bear their distinct identity. And uh, there are a lot of, because Bhopal and MP being the central uh, state of the country, you see a lot of people from nearby uh, states or nearby cultural regions actually coming and residing into, into, into Bhopal being the capital city of MP. And that's why it becomes very important for us to actually allow each and every uh, kind of uh, cultural group to practice their cultural right and to practice their uh, cultural uh, festivities. And uh, it becomes important for us to actually have an umbrella framework of cultural policies that addresses all these, uh, all these uh, cultural practices. And um, Hindus and Muslims definitely form a very big group, big religious group, and they have been cohabiting, coexisting in peace for centuries. And uh, Bhopal is one of the cities where you can actually see that this peaceful coexistence has taken place. And uh, uh, the state has been adopting cultural activities that have been active in most of the desired areas. Cultural rights have become a way of life in many aspects. And in Constitution of India also, we see that there's a mention of cultural rights and education. And uh, this takes care of the, uh, of the cultural rights at the national level or at the uh, national framework. And uh, uh, it holds a significant place in overall framework of the Constitution. Citizen participation in cultural activities can be ensured through what we actually do around the year. Uh, these practices find place in the action plans of innumerable state organizations and the others that are assisted through it. Um, so can you come, can you scroll up a bit? Yeah. So uh, there are, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you can see a, def a dedicated budget for culture and uh, system of various councils for various art forms, scholarships, grants, um, 
honors awards um cultural events which are uh, state assisted and uh, the aim at sharing interstate cultural richness through events and the urban local bodies they play a very proactive role uh, that has made bhopal a very unique cultural hub and various ngos working towards creating a vibrant atmosphere also add to the state's efforts so this i think this commitment i currently don't remember how much uh, percentage was there for this particular commitment in our radar graph but certainly uh, this commitment made us realize that uh, we need to work towards cultural policy as a fra- as as a policy document which is of utmost importance to actually make culture accessible to all to uh, to ensure that cultural activities do not die over the time and uh, we actually add to the cultural activities all around there because there is definitely a scope uh, you have uh, people you have people from different spheres of life you have people from different cultural backgrounds and they currently practice their cultural activities and they understand uh, i mean i do, i'm not sure that they actually understand their cultural right but they definitely practice it in uh, um, in a very active manner and government is also supporting them but uh, a policy framework or a policy document needs to be in place so i mean as soon as we can do it and maybe this document helps us in doing so so yeah oh so with this <laughs> thank you yeah thank you akriti thank you so here it was our first commitment and we discussed all the you know all the possible possibilities uh, related to that and uh, again i would like to emphasize on the fact that this might be a this can be a starting point since we don't re- readily talk about such things in general and uh, uh, it can be a starting point for to develop further more not just this program but a lot more to develop with respect to your city the society that you are currently living in and it will instigate and initiate lot of conversations uh, in your head within your head and amongst yourselves so yeah this is just um, one of our um, maybe a small little initiative in helping you with that so yeah um thank you so much everyone for joining today this marks the end of the session and uh, yeah uh, if we have any questions we can probably take it up in next one or two minutes or else you can always you know um, reach um, just a second okay there are certain questions i'll just have a look <coughs> okay right five okay all right can we have this document please yes we can have uh, you can have both of the documents they are there i'm not sure this is by miss aditi gulati are you associated with any chapter or are you a kanvina kuvanvina somehow related so you can probably uh, make the best out of it you can write to us uh, directly to our emails and then we can carry this conversation forward and send you the question sorry who is this hello i am lalit pandey from udaipur kanvina hello uh, lalit hi uh, good uh, good evening Uh, and my question is this uh, one point uh, she raised uh, um, the, um, we should develop the habit of the um, cultivate the habit of the student and the society you know mm-hmm. to uh, visit the uh, yeah, library then the museums and all these things but uh, the question is this how we can attract them because uh, in udaipur i have seen, uh, there are five or six museums Mm-hmm. and uh, there are two three very good libraries but the stu- even the students they do not uh, visit the um, museums and the and the school environment is so mm-hmm. leave the private schools and the public schools and the english medium school convent schools but it is the very um, pretty condition of the government school Mm. after writing and writing the letters even they are officers joint director director inspector of a school they never agree to involve their students in the programs of the intake okay i am okay. upset from this okay so uh, to give uh, to give you a relation to it uh, maybe you know uh, we have this fondness to places that we like 
right maybe if you know we uh, i don't know why did you approach to um the authorities for it you can you know first of all start with baby steps for that matter approach the schools not really public schools i'm not really sure but start with some educational facility approach them directly and tell them about the importance of it we have a specialized division for it sorry i am interrupting <laughs> problem yeah. is this is the teacher individually uh, he or she is uh, uh, very ready to do the job mm. but mm. The, um, her or his principal or mm. the inspector of schools or the director of education they never allow them to uh, participate in the function i think program. a lot of get lot of gets things you know things get stuck in logistics and yes, yes. Uh, the yeah yeah you know right mm-hmm. so in that case there can be you know multiple uh, events created for multiple schools at one place they are you know specialized in it they can do it very readily you can link them you know and uh, somehow make them involved in the whole thing it will be easier for them to convince you know since you are only you know you are the whole soul person who is um, getting after the whole thing it might become a bit difficult and you know a bit of a task you can involve the hex division and again you can probably you know come up with some sort of quizzes so that you know also uh, the awareness starts very small so you can probably uh, since you are convener of the uh, chapter udaipur in itself is a very culturally uh, rich city and culturally very educated they know how to tap culture they are very much aware about the importance of it right so you can you know uh, host certain um, quizzes or certain events for school students once they get a hang of it they might you know uh, go up to their teachers or to their the teachers on for that matter go can go up to the administration and see tell them the importance of it and tell them how much the children enjoy being part of the whole thing so then it will be a conversation starter it of course there will be baby steps as i uh, mentioned yeah. earlier but the head of the department or the principal or the headmaster and mm-hmm. his problem is this he he or she says that i will have to take the permission from the inspector of schools to organize a quiz hmm and what can i do no 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 <laughs> you are trying to do your bit and which is very commendable and we mm-hmm. have to keep trying it that is what we can do we can try and try and unless we succeed right so <laughs> at, at in fact the daily level but at government level you can pressurize them Uh, yes. I can write to you. I can. Yes, you can do that, that, and you can probably, you know, keep the person uh, who is who was at least interested. The teacher, you said, yes, you were yes, interested yes. in that. So keep, uh, keep us in the loop, and then probably Hex can take over, and they can, you know, help them and educate them to for you know about the importance <laughs> of uh, <laughs> culture and uh, incorporating it in the curriculum. So now, yeah, same way. Thank you, thank you. They do a lot of fun quizzes. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Thank so yeah. You. Okay. i think um, a lot of us have already left also so uh, never mind we'll probably take up uh, this conversation further in our next session which will relate which will talk about the commitment to and uh, yeah let's meet again next time tuesday again and yeah, see you all around thank you for joining in and yeah bye take care bye